Hi, and welcome to a new tutorial on how to use the Vienna Instrument Pro. First of all, let's learn how to set it up. The VSL Instrument Pro works in a system that uses cells to load different articulations. I can create more cells, either horizontally or vertically, by simply clicking and dragging in the lower corner of the first cell. So let's say that I want to create a violin section with three articulations. After creating my three cells, I'm going to go to the Patch tab and choose the library that I want to load and choose the instrument and then drag the articulations that I need. So in this case, I'm going to just drag the sustain. I'm going to drag the pizzicato. and the tremolo. So now I have three cells with one articulation each. Let's listen to the three articulation. I have my sustain, my pizzicato, and my tremolo. Now to switch articulation, of course, I'm not going to click on it, but I need to assign some sort of controller that allows me to smoothly move from one articulation to the other. To do so, I'm going to go to the matrix control area. And here is where I can select my movement across cells on the x-axis and on the y-axis. For the x-axis, I can just go here and where it says none, I can choose different options that I can choose to switch between articulations. I always recommend using the key switch option. These are keys that are outside the range of the instrument and they are automatically assigned to each articulation. In this case, C0 is going to be my sustain, C sharp 0 my pizzicato, and D0 my tremolo. So now I can use those keys on my keyboard to switch articulation. Very simple. So if I want to start sequencing something, I can just hit record and after I hit record, select the first articulation, play the part, and then when I want to switch articulation, simply press the corresponding key switch. Let's try. If I look at my part that I just recorded, I can see here my notes and down here my key switches. Because the Vienna library is very dry, I always recommend adding a touch of reverb while you play. Eventually we're going to change the reverberation later when we mix it, but just for playing purposes. Go to Advanced, select the Reverb tab, turn on the Algorithmic Reverb and choose the dry-wet balance. It just makes the library a little bit more playable. Another important thing to consider is that at the moment velocity is changing the dynamic sample switching, which means if I press a note soft on my controller, I'm going to send a low value velocity and that's going to trigger most likely a pianissimo or a mezzo piano sample. If I press the key harder with a velocity, let's say higher than 120, I'm going to get a fortissimo sample. That really helps us creating more realistic renditions of acoustic instruments. Now this works great for staccato or pizzicato or very short phrasing where there is a lot of rhythmic activity. But for long sustain notes, I would like to have a different way of controlling how the sample switching is generated. So to do so, if I tap on the velocity crossfade box, now the dynamic sample switching is going to be controlled by the velocity crossfade fader right here and not by velocity anymore. 
This option is great for long sustained passages where you want to have a note that goes from pianissimo to fortissimo and you want to control the dynamic sample switching. So if I select sustain and I play a note, my velocity crossfade now controls the sample switching. So remember to do so check the velocity crossfade box. Now we simply need to assign a controller to this fader here. To assign a controller to one of the faders in the Vienna Instrument Pro, you simply have to control click or right click on the fader until it flashes and then move the controller on your keyboard. Now I grabbed that velocity crossfade switch with my controller. I recommend using CC number one modulation. So now I have two ways of controlling my dynamics. The velocity crossfade switch that allows me to change the sample switching, but I also have my expression controller 11 that allows me to control the overall volume of that patch. So at this point, what I recommend doing for long sustained passages is to play the controller one while you play the part and the expression to be overdubbed later in order to retouch any dynamics that you want to fine tune. Let's try. If I look at my part now, I can see that my controller one was recorded to do all the different dynamics. Now, what about if I want to do a, al niente at the end of this note? So I cannot do it with just my controller one because again, if I just go to the end of controller one, I'm going to get only a pianissimo sample. Instead, what I want to do is to overdub my controller 11 expression to really bring the volume to nothing at the end. Let's try. Again, this is my controller 1 and here's my controller 11 that I just used to fine tune some of the dynamics here and then bring the volume all the way down at the end. What about if I want to use the different articulations that need velocity to control the dynamic sample switching? For example, the pizzicato articulation. In this case, it would be kind of silly to use a controller to change the dynamics Instead, I would really like to have velocity controlling the dynamics for pizzicato part or for staccato part. This is possible, and the way to do it is going to be to select the articulation that you want to edit. And then if you have the Instrument Pro, go to the Edit tab. If you have the non-pro version of the instrument, you're going to just see that parameter right here in the main window. And where it says velocity crossfade, instead of global, which means follow whatever I selected here, this is the global parameter, have that off. 
So now for the pizzicato articulation, velocity will control the dynamic sample switching and not my fader here, which means that if I play pizzicato, velocity controls the different dynamics. So very simple. You can basically adapt how the dynamic sample switching is changed by either going with the global setting or change it for each articulation. Finally, what about if I want to crossfade between two articulations? For example, I might want to crossfade between sustain and tremolo. When I select a cell, you can see that there are different slots inside each cell that allow me to load more articulations. So if I just tap there on the cell, I can go and look for a different articulation, let's say tremolo. And at the moment, under the sustain cell, there are two articulations playing at the same time. I'm hearing both sustain and tremolo. This is also a good way to do some layering. But if I want to switch between the two and crossfade between the two, I'm going to tap right in the middle there and I'm going to see this crossfade icon appearing. At this point, I can use the slot crossfade to crossfade between the two articulations. Sustain, crossfading into tremolo. At this point, I can simply assign a MIDI controller to this fader by control clicking or right clicking and choosing a control change. And so now I can do some very smooth crossfading between these two. And it works really, really well. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and good, happy recording with Vienna Instruments.